it's a very rapid uh, motion and a lot of times we see uh, butt shelling here maybe a couple kernels like i said but these these uh, ears of corn are coming in fast so that on every uh, ear is going to add up over time hi and welcome back to another agronomic update here in north central iowa phil long regional agronomist with liquid grow out in the soybean field today talking about yield loss at harvest time. This is something a lot of people don't take the time to do. Uh, maybe you're assessing it as you go, uh, which is also a good thing watching it as you're driving the combine. Uh, but understanding what's actually being lost is critically important, especially when you look at your yields and so forth at the end of the season. So first things first, what are we looking for? Basically four beans, roughly four beans, single beans per square foot uh, is going to indicate about a bushel of loss. I've got a, a, a foot square circle here. Uh, it's actually meant more for alfalfa stems, but uh, serves the same purpose. Um, you can stop the combine and look at just the header, um, or you can go behind and look at total loss. This would be after the combine, so this would be total loss, and we are right in the middle. I will mention we are at, on a headlands, but that's to keep, keep us out of the wind. So. I put the, I cleaned all the area here within the foot circle, and we actually have about 16 beans down here. It's hard to see, but there's several. We're right next to a row here. So 16 beans is going to equal about four bushel uh, yield loss. And in this case, in about a 60 bushel crop, um, that's unfortunate, uh, unfortunately about six, six and a half percent. So that's a, lot, a little bit higher than we'd like to see. Uh, and in this particular field was harvested with a conventional a soybean platform so not a draper head and a lot of times the draper heads do reduce a lot of this so this is important to understand this uh, it helps you make more decisions in the future whether it's on equipment or whatnot uh, but inside that circle uh, we have a four bushel loss now if they're coming out of the back of the combine that's why you got to separate this out and do this while you're harvesting if it's coming out of the back of the combine then you need to make adjustments in a cleaning shoe and make sure that you're not losing it out the back of the combine whether it's fan speed or like i mentioned cleaning shoe adjustments you don't want to be losing beans especially out the back of the combine sometimes you see pods or something um, still a cleaning shoe adjustment can be made to, to reduce that. If we're seeing beans on the ground like this, it's likely shatter loss and we can uh, raise that reel up. You want to have that reel high enough so it's not beating them too low or tangling them. You also don't want it to be going too fast. A lot of these are, are based on tire, wheel speed um, automatically, but you can usually override and adjust it up and down uh, in, your, in your combine. It should be going about 1.2 times the speed of your machine, so just a little bit faster to lay it in and then you can also adjust four and a half you just really want to hit that that line of soybeans as it's getting cut uh, you want to just basically lay it right back in so if you're beating it and you're seeing that plant shake as it's before it gets cut by the by the sickle uh, you need to slow it down uh, and reduce some of these losses the other thing i'll mention um, i had two of these right next to each other here you can see we had a, a three bean and a two bean pod here right next to each other left on not cut by the cutter bar this is something that if you see a lot of this in your field, there's not a lot here, but uh, if you see a lot of this, this is something you could push your populations a little higher. These are 30 inch rows. Uh, if you're in 15s, you likely won't have this issue. There's enough competition around. But in 30s, if you're too low a population, uh, soybeans will tend to pot as low as they can. Uh, they have that extra space. They're gonna, they're gonna branch out, they're gonna pod lower, and you may potentially lose more pods under the, under the cutter bar than you want to. So make sure you go out and assess that. It may be something that next year you can adjust for, plant a little higher population to make sure you, you don't, you're not potting uh, too low. So a lot of things to look at here this time of the year. Uh, don't just move on after the combine goes through the field. Make sure you're assessing it as you go through the field uh, and even afterwards to make any of these important decisions because this, this could be a big deal uh, on your operation to be able to make decisions in the future. So with that, we're gonna jump over to the corn side and go to the cornfield. Okay, so now we're over in the cornfield looking at harvest loss at the header specifically. I'm, like I mentioned in soybeans, I'm not gonna talk about what happens basically after the header. I wanna focus on these things because they're pretty easy to fix and they're kind of right in your vision too. But there's a lot of stuff inside the machine. If you're losing stuff out the back, you need to make sure you're paying attention to all those adjustments, whether it's rotor speed, uh, and, and concave as well as your cleaning shoe uh, adjustments. But I wanna focus on the front here. 
uh, because that's uh, something that we can easily remedy. And as, as you watch uh, this, as you're driving the combine, it's something that you uh, should be paying attention to. So I already did my counts on the ground with my foot square, or my square foot, foot squared uh, circle there that I had in the soybean side. And we're looking for two kernels to equal a bushel. So in this case, I had four kernels of corn. Uh, so we're at about a two bushel loss, which is not bad given the conditions of this particular field. It's early corn planted early. Uh, and it's, it's about 17%. So we're, we're really dry, a uh, lot of dry weather coming, perfect, beautiful harvest conditions, uh, but it makes harvesting sometimes a challenge. So I wanna talk about two different ways uh, that we have harvest loss, that things that we can remedy and work on uh, even now, but even for next season as we go forward. So I'm gonna talk through kind of what happens at the header when the corn comes in the, in the header. Now, and I do have the safety lock on this hydraulic cylinder. So don't worry about that. Uh, but as the, as the stalk comes up through here, as you're driving down the row, uh, these gathering chains are gonna pull that stalk up through there. And then the, the stalk rolls on the underside here uh, are gonna rip the plant down through the deck plate. So uh, I'll try to simulate that, but what tends to happen if you can see the corn kernels flying um, that it gets, it's a very rapid uh, motion. And a lot of times we see uh, butt shelling here, maybe a couple kernels, like I said, but these ears of corn are coming in fast. So that on every uh, ear is gonna add up over time. So we wanna reduce that. How do we reduce that? Well, making sure we have all these adjustments right. You know, the, the speed of your gathering chains, speed of the combine, all that stuff comes into play. You want these ears hitting about halfway, roughly three quarters away up. Uh, on your on your deck plates. That's where they're they should be adjusted correctly a lot of these heads adjust from the cab So adjusting that deck plate clearance is pretty easy to do So if you change fields change conditions, maybe you have higher planting populations, which is going to reduce uh, Stock diameter you need to pay attention to that and maybe narrow up those deck plates so that there's not as much room in between Because the narrower you have them the less butt shelling is going to happen when it's this dry uh, if, it, if the corn's a little wetter, like I said, around 18% or so, the wetter it is, the less that this occurs. But as we get further on into harvest here, it's going to become more of an issue and we're going to have a lot more harvest losses due to, to butt shelling. So like I mentioned, the deck plates is a, is a major thing to keep an eye on. Um, also speed of a lot of these things, even, even the combine speed. But uh, there's aftermarket parts with brushes and so forth that can really help reduce uh, the impact uh, that it has coming down on these deck plates. So on the other side, the second thing I want to talk about is, is whole ear loss. And I see this a lot of times. Uh, sometimes it's speed related, speed related, all these things moving. Uh, wear parts are critically important too, uh, but there's a lot of things that can help save uh, ears from flying out of the head. Uh, they may fly forward, they may fly backwards, fly up on the on the throat of the combine, out the sides. There's there's all kinds of things. There's shielding for the sides that you can put on to make sure, especially in down corn. Uh, if the corn's, uh, hopefully you're not harvesting that, but uh, a lot of times, even in good standing corn, um, the ears will flop over because they're heavy on the sides, on the, each side of the head. Uh, so having those shields to keep those heads from being stripped off outside the head is important too. Um, but also, like I mentioned, wear parts on all this stuff is really important and having those tolerances checked every year uh, to make sure that uh, you're not uh, throwing ears out. There's also, you can see these ear savers on here. There's a lot of different uh, aftermarket parts nowadays that can really uh, make a corn head even better. Uh, even without necessarily buying a new corn head, you can just make your corn head better by adding some of those parts and making sure that you're not losing ears. So paying attention to uh, how you're losing it this fall. If it's something like butt shelling, like I mentioned, there's some adjustments you can make as well as, uh, you know, you know, if it's, if it's that dry, you're gonna end up having some butt shelling. So, you know, try to, try to get to the drier fields first and get those harvested and reduce as much of that as you can, adjust those deck plates. Uh, and, and if you're seeing whole ears on the ground, um, that's not a good thing. There could be ear droppage before you get the combine in the field, which you should have looked at that when you're looking for, for stock lodging. But um, if you're seeing whole ears being thrown out of the head, you need to pay attention to how it's happening and if it's something you can decrease. So with that, hopefully everybody has a safe rest of the harvest season. Hopefully that gives you a few tips uh, to look for uh, when you're harvesting this fall. And maybe just think about things that you could do for next year, uh, whether it's management or equipment, 
that might make uh, you lose a little bit less uh, during the harvest because we make it all the way to harvest we don't want to lose uh, any more yield at that point so thanks for watching this week and we look forward to catching you on the next video stay in the know with liquid grow